well, is a, the quality good enough? Okay. All right, nice. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll be interacting with you all um, on the chat. Also, feel free if you want, any one of you want to, um, to, to say anything, you can either turn the mic on or if you want to, um, to interact on the chat, that's also possible. I'll be having the chat right here so I can check. Okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, let's get started. Podcasting, rediscovering the podcasting. Um, well, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the podcasting or not. Uh, the main purpose of this uh, workshop is uh, to make people a little bit more familiar with the podcast as a phenomenon and having a general idea of what the podcasting is, but especially how can we actually turn that phenomenon into our classroom in terms of um, either pro uh, producing the podcast as a tutors or even um, apply somehow the podcasting from our students' perspective. I think it can be very useful as well. So before we get started with that, let's start all right, let's start with a classic, a brainstorming, right? This is also, this is always pretty, um, uh, it's a good proof, it's a good test of, to check everybody's mindset, to check everybody's ideas about where you think the podcasting is. So the question is very simple before I start. Um, if I would say podcast, or you can actually think uh, podcasting, podcast, which word, which uh, concept, idea, um, feeling comes to your mind. You don't need to think too much. Just like, just think about podcasts. So you think of what, for example, okay. I just version of something, resources, internet, radio, mm -hmm. audio and internet. Okay, radio, radio, people talking, boring. <laughs> Radio, mm -hmm. okay, resources, discussion, knowledge, interview, hmm, okay, language learning, okay, information, driving, okay, yeah, that's, that's actually quite curious, there are also people, a lot of people like listening to podcasts when they're driving or doing the, um, the house, the house cleaning and this kind of stuff. Small talk, subscription, listening, well, multitasking, storytelling, great, that's great. They're all great ideas. Um, and I am happy to see that all the ideas, pretty much all the idea, except the ones that saying that it's boring, all the ideas are quite positive. However, in my, <laughs> in all the years that I've been working on podcasting, I've found a lot of, not, bad comments on podcasting, but actually um, I found a lot of people reluctant to using podcasting nowadays. They think it's, it's a thing that it might be some old fashioned and with barely no applications in terms of education. So this is part of the aim of this workshop, why we should um, take the podcasting in consideration. Maybe some of you already used it in your lessons of the 40 language, either Spanish or English or anything. Okay, so let's get started with this. Um, as many of you already know, um, I'm a teacher of Spanish here. I'm teaching Spanish to several in several modules. And, but also one of my passions uh, is the podcasting, the radio. So <laughs> this is me in several different uh, occasions through the years. Actually, the two pictures, the two first pictures, I still have some hair. Yeah, it's gone now. But yeah, I, I've been using it for years. At the very beginning, mostly as a fun thing, just to do with friends, to speak about different topics. Uh, we used to gather at my place or uh, we used to uh, broadcast in some football games for people. Um, but actually I tried at some point to incorporate it to my um, language courses, uh, like 
eight years ago. And I would like to share my experience as well on this PPT. Um, the first thing will be, yes, <laughs> it's me. I am a podcaster. I can call myself a podcaster other than teacher, of course. Um, and I love it. Actually, I love it. I really love it. Although some people don't really get why. Some of the ideas that I found through the years are quite mixed, quite diverse. For example, I picked some of the ones I recall. There were much more than that, but some of the ones of the ideas that I heard through the years are, for example, podcasting is boring. Someone said that before, right? Or my students aren't interested in such a thing. Or I don't know, you can't learn a language just by listening to radio. I mean, how? Producing a podcast is too difficult. I don't have the technical skills. That's pretty much for experts. It's not a thing that everybody can do, right? That's that's a pretty common idea. Or I never heard of podcasting in China. Is that even popular? I heard that a lot actually here in China for um, by some Chinese colleagues and also by some of the friends whenever I said that I, I work a lot with podcasts. Who wants to listen to podcasts when you have Netflix? I mean, is it even necessary? You have Netflix, you have HBO, you have all the video streaming platforms, you have Zoom, you have Two Move. why you need podcasts? Or a classic one, my grandpa used to listen to radio, you are too old fashioned. That's also pretty common. That's pretty, right? Like some people think it's still like old fashioned thing. Well, I'm afraid I have to, I have to say that I wouldn't say that it's wrong that all these uh, topics or all these ideas are wrong, but it's true that um, I'll try to justify, I'll try to prove, to demonstrate with this PPT that uh, podcasting can be fun, can be useful, can be easy. And I'll try to make it practical as well so that many of you can at least try once in your class and who knows maybe you incorporate it eventually so before um, starting um, the topic i want to cover the things i want to talk about are first of all at, in terms of terminology we need to know what is podcasting um, i'll speak about podcast as an educational tool the type of educational podcast that we might find some people think that podcast is just about um, speaking out of a topic, uh, you know, just for fun or just talking about sport, but there are also a lot of educational um, uh, uses of podcast. I will try to explain somehow or just to put the context of podcasting in China. I have to admit that I was surprised myself when I was a little researching on this topic, how big podcasting is in China, much bigger than what I can even expect, expected when I started um, looking for some more information. Um, I'll try to provide some ideas of the use of podcasts in foreign language classroom, most of which have been used or I've been used for through the years. I'm not intent to say that those are the best or the only ones. Of course, there are many different ideas, but I'll try to share the ones that worked out for me. Um, if we have time, just by the end of the workshop, I will um, provide you with some more information in terms of the events and webinars and training courses for, um, for using podcasts. There are a lot of them, and some of which are taking place within these days. In this week, next week, there are um, a lot of training for podcasting. And yeah, and just the contact. I think everybody, everybody know me already, but yeah, just in case. Uh, okay. All right, let me just open this. Okay. There you go. All right, so let's start with the terminology. Let's start with the concept of podcasting. What is a podcast? Well, Chinese, I think in Chinese should be something like puoke, something like that. I'm not sure of the tone, but should be something like that. So this is a common, uh, this is a question for everybody. So what is a podcast? Where do you think is a podcast? It doesn't need to be any technical description, any technical definition, just in overall terms. What does a podcast mean to you? What is a podcast? Where do you think it is? You can, you, yeah, you can type it there. Steel internet radio, okay. 
listening to something that is not music, but in MP3 form. That's a good point. Okay. Radio on demand. Hmm, that's a good concept as well. A radio show, but specific to a particular topic and no adverts. Well, that's going to be a matter of discussion as well. The ads thing. <laughs> Asynchronous radio talk show, usually amateur, mm -hmm. with a good topic, audio series, hmm. thematic programs, tax talk with sound only, mm -hmm. not, <laughs> not random chatting. Okay. Well, in fact, all of those concepts are quite accurate. Audio information with specific topics. Okay. Well, in fact, all those concepts are quite accurate. Let I will summarize them um, by saying that is, in fact, a little bit of everything that you guys just said. In fact, podcast might be anything and everything which is audio related and that might be shared afterwards. The original concept of podcast comes back to 2000s. Oh yeah, that's too old fashioned, it's too old. Well, it was when the iPods were trendy. You, Many of you already, uh, probably remember the first editions of the iPhone and then all the Mac uh, um, items that started came out and then the iPods were huge in the 2000s, right? Well, Ben Hammersley started with this concept as a mix of the concepts of iPod and broadcast. Um, yes, only one year later, um, there was an updating of this concept and men in 2005, um, define the podcasting process as the process of capturing an audio event, song, speech, or mixed sounds. Some people just said uh, talk or radio series or people talking. Not necessarily. It might be an audio event, like broadcasting an event. It might be a song. It might be a speech of any kind of sounds, which are posted somehow in a website, in a blog, maybe blocks are kind of out of date, but in the 2000s were big, in a data structure called RSS 2.0 envelope. Uh, don't worry by now if you don't really understand or you're not familiar with the word of RSS, because I'll go over later on. But this is quite a key point, the RSS 2.0 envelope. Well, apart from that, the podcasting have been defined I mean, you can check on different authors, you can check on different resources, but there are always three concepts, three ideas about the podcast that are always there. The first one is that it's, it's, it's flexibility. It's a very flexible. You can listen to this, either if it's a song, a speech, a radio show, anything. You can listen to them whenever you want, wherever you are, in any moment that you feel like, as some people say, when you're driving, when you're doing your housework and you're doing your assessment, I don't know, you can listen to podcasts anytime, right? Um, and this is one of the key differences from the radio. Some people say, yeah, it's pretty much the radio, right? This, it's not a big difference. There is a big difference because on the radio, you cannot choose uh, which topic you're going to um, listen to or you maybe there is a, there is a show that, um, it's happening, at, I don't know, at 2 a.m. and you're, at that time you're sleeping. So the podcast, podcast, the original idea was a revolution because it let the people speak, um, listening anytime. As we do now with Netflix, for example, with these video platforms that we can check the video or movies or documentary anytime. The second important idea about podcast is it is user friendly. This means that we do not need any specific digital um, um, knowledge or need digital skills to either listening or producing podcasting. I really started in early 10 years ago with the podcasting with no knowledge about it. And I didn't know anything about audio quality, audio formats. Uh, I mean, I knew what an MP3 was, but I didn't really know much about it. And I started pretty successfully. Um, I'll go over the process right away so you can just see how easy it is. And then uh, another um, idea, which is always, um, uh, you know, bring up to light is the portability. Brooks said that in 2018, he summarized um, these three um, ideas about the podcasting. 
it's, it's portable. As I said, you can have it in your phone. Everybody has the phone here. So everybody has the access to different platforms where they can listen to radio, to different shows. You can have it in your iPad, in your laptop. You can have it pretty much anywhere, even in your car, right? There are some cars already with internet access that you can just connect and while driving or, so it is quite uh, portable, of course. Okay, so um, basics to create a podcast. One of the topic, some people always tell me when I say the word podcast is, man, really, I don't have the technical things that you need to, I don't have, a, I don't really want to spend my money on like technology, like, you know, this kind of software or hardware that I need to go over podcasts. Well, I have a good news for you. You don't need much. I'm pretty sure that everybody in this room or this virtual room has the minimum or the basic things that you need to create a podcast. And that is quite simple. You'll see. In terms of equipment, it's quite easy. Microphone. What? I don't have a microphone. I know. Maybe you don't. But you have a phone, right? You have a smartphone. You have a laptop. You have an iPad. And all those devices have the microphone integrated. So you can use it already. I'm pretty sure everybody has this headset, right? Or any sort of headset, not necessarily this, but any sort of headset with a um, maybe some microphone with a you know, so you have pretty much everything. So in terms of software or online tools that you can use, uh, of course, you need something to record this voice or this sound. But again, you don't really need much. If you have an iPhone, if you have a smartphone, if you have any of those devices, they natively have this um, software integrated just to record the audio. That's fair enough. That's enough to work out. But if you want to keep or to get some extra quality, there are some resources that you can check. For example, I don't know if you're familiar with um, programs like Audacity, which is free, GarageBand if you're a user of Mac, um, or you can also, let me just double check the chat. There are some comments here. Yes, Audacity is accessible in China. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Fully accessible actually. But if not, you can also access CleanFeed, which is an online platform that you can access. Note here that the only browser you can use with CleanFeed is Google Chrome, but still works perfectly. And it's, an, it's a tool that allows you to record online. You don't need to do, you don't need to do anything. You just go into the website. It's a, you just have to log in. It's pretty easy. Um, and you can record online, you can edit online, and you can even send the link to somebody else to do an online interview as well with no limits of time. It's fully free. Cool Edit, for example, when Holly said, yeah, that's another option. Mm -hmm. There are many options in the market. Paid option, free options. As I said, Audacity, this is the one I used. It's pretty old fashioned in terms of um, the way it looks. It looks pretty, 1.0, pretty 2000, but it to me is one of the best and it's fully free. And of course we can use Jumu, not for editing, of course, but we can use it for um, recording interviews, for example, I'm saying. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, Audacity can be installed. Actually, I have it here in my, in my office. I have it installed here. And I must say, I even used it and I know some of the tutors do too for preparing the listening exams. Whenever you have to cut or edit in some um, tracks, it's pretty easy to, to use. And yeah, MITS can use, can install in the devices. Okay, um, I'll go over some more um, technology a bit later. All right, so main steps, if you want to create, this is a long process, but I'll try to summarize because I don't want to extend on this. But the basic idea is first you have to have clear in mind what you want to do with your podcast, the topic, the format that you want to use, if it's an interview, if it's a monologue, if you want to, I don't know, you need to have a clear, like before you're going to write or before you're going to do anything, of course, you need to think about it and decide somehow what you're going to do. Once you have the idea, then you record your podcast and then you edit your podcast. And then, well, as I said, we can go deeper and deeper into details, but this is not about technical skills, but um, educational skills. So I will just go 
just very quickly and very generally. The third step is normally to upload this content. Let's suppose that you already have an MP3 file, right? And you want to do something with it. Okay, then you need to upload this file onto a hosting server. We'll go over the most um, of the top hosting servers here in China in the next slides. So I can tell you which platforms you can use with no restrictions here in China. But So you have to upload it into that hosting server and then that hosting server will generate automatically an address, a link. This is a key thing. Once you have this link, you have to paste this link into one of these um, podcast directories. They're also called podcatchers and magic. Once you post it there, either for example, Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, um, once you paste it there, they do their magic. Anytime you upload a new episode, they will automatically detect from the hosting server that you have a new episode and then it will deliver to all your subscriber. This is the thing. So you literally just, just have to do this copy and paste little link thing only once, the very first time you create a podcast, right? So the process, the sharing process, if we summarize, is quite easy. The first time a podcaster uploads the podcast to a hosting server, this personal RSS feed, which is the address I just mentioned, this link, right, is created. Then a podcaster links this feed, this address to a public podcast directories, also known as podcatchers, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. In China, we have Shimalaya, Google Podcasts, etc. Right? These are the icons for those. Um, okay. And then listeners will subscribe and listen to your podcast from those directories. Boom. There we go. And then, as I said, these directories will detect every time a new episode is available. And boom. You see, this is a, a screenshot from the iPhone. You can see this is the type of notification that usually Apple Podcasts or CAS or Overcast usually send to the users. Every single user um, who subscribed to your podcast, right? And then they say, for example, I don't know, this first one, 208, this guest in Inception with special guest John Maltz is now available from the talk show with John Gruber. So this is magic because all your users will, users, or in this case, we can call students either from um, if you produce it or your students produce, but everybody's connected. Everybody will know about a new episode. Um, okay, let me check. I don't know. Okay, right. So how's the situation? You probably think, okay, that's great, but these, most of these um, directories will not work in China. And also, is that even popular in China? I never heard of that. Well, I have a bad news for you, or maybe good. In China, the podcast is called as the ear economy. So I guess that says a lot, right? The ear economy, I'm going to give you just a few data that can be quite um, impressive. Look, the impact of the ear economy, which is audiobooks, not necessarily only podcasts, but audiobooks, podcasts, audio streaming services is growing rapidly. I got this information from a um, report that KR Asia Consulting did in 2020, just last year. And I'm going to give you some data that it's crazy. I, I couldn't, didn't even expect that. Check. 542 million of users of the audio streaming platforms only in China. 25 billion of RMB in terms of market revenues. Um, in 2019, half of the internet users in China already used the audio streaming content, half of them. So it's something that is quite popular. And even in last year, since the COVID-19 outbreak, there was an acceleration of the normal growing process out of the 50%. So it's growing, it's crazy, right? And this um, report from this consultancy, they also mentioned some of the top platforms working in China. We'll go over this um, later, but they mentioned three platforms um, who are actually growing really, really big. 
Chinting, I'm, I'm sorry about the pronouns, Shimalaya and Litru or Litru, I'm not the tone, I'm not sure about the tone, but Litru, right? That's the three top platforms nowadays in China. Mm, you, maybe the, 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 um, our Chinese colleagues are more familiar with them. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Our, um, any of us have heard of it. Uh, personally, before I started this um, study and before I started researching for, for this uh, PPT, I only knew Himalaya, but I never heard of Qingqing or Li Qi, and I found out that there are really, really good options for podcasting. Um, yeah, Himalaya, I'm reading now some, some colleagues, <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, Shimalaya have the app. Yes, all of them has the app actually. So you can use them all. All of them are quite popular, but I use Himalaya. Okay, that's great. Chinchin has more music. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually the name of Chinchin, the full name of Chinchin is Chinchin FM. So that says a lot. It's mostly into radio shows and radio music pretty much, radio station. Yeah. So some of the main products they offer are podcast, audio live streaming, audiobooks, classes, radio. I remember many years ago, <laughs> um, I'm not sure, I think it was in the 90s, um, but I still remember when my mom was trying to learn some English, she used to, she used to have this um, disc man or walkman and she had some tapes or some discs of how to learn, I don't know, English. And while she was doing, I don't know, cooking or doing their housework or whatever, um, she was listening to it. That was pretty popular in the 90s and early 2000s. Well, this is pretty much the same stuff. The audio live stream is still, the audio books are uh, mainstream. So it's pretty much the same concept. So if we go deeper, into this top audio contents in China. As you said, Himalaya is the top content, 79 million daily users. And it's more focused on professionals, but there are also some user-generated content. Um, when I will share this PPT later on, you can access the links. I'm going to access only some of them because the time is quite tight and I wanna go over many things. So if we have time in the end, I will show you a little bit later. Um, but as I said, it's, it's crazy. This will be like, we might think of Himalaya as the YouTube in, term, in terms of um, audio files, right? It's the YouTube in China for the audio files. You can find pretty much anything and everything about different topics from generated, from user generated content. You can use it from professional um, users or companies or academies, it's huge. The second one is Literature FM. Actually, this is one of the most interesting one in terms of education because check, their content is primarily user generated, which means that it's the, 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 the let's say 80% of the content that you will find there is generated by students, is generated by audiences under 24, which is great because our students are quite familiar with this app they're usually access this app to learn, to listen to their favorite podcasters. Um, so it's, a, it's quite popular among teenagers. So keep an eye on it. And as Han Wei said before, uh, Ting Ting FM is the third top. It's still huge, 12 million of active users. I mean, 12 millions in China might sound like this is a neighborhood, but <laughs> 12 millions are a lot of people. <laughs> And um, radio stations, audiobooks, uh, podcasting is, is really big. <clears throat> this is in China, but okay, what if I'm living tomorrow and I'm not only interested in China, I want to know some more. Okay, let's talk about other worldwide top platforms in terms of podcasting. If, you, if we consider the ones with the open access in China, and I will have to insist that open access means today, maybe tomorrow will not. I don't know. I've got the experience of being able to access to certain platforms and then one month, one month later, they were already banned or restricted. So never know, right? But the last time I checked, 
um, Apple Podcast. <coughs> I'm sorry, Apple Podcast is still open. <coughs> um, Spotify Podcast is partially open. Not full contents are available, but some contents are. And Google Podcast is pretty much the same story. I found some podcasts and other podcasts that I used to listen back in Spain. I tried to search and there's no clue. There's, there's no hint where they are. So it's partially open. <clears throat> and there are some other platforms which are restricted in China, but it might be useful maybe um, later on or with some magic tool that some people have to access them, which I don't know. Buzzsprout, Podbean, Blueberry, SoundCloud, Transistor, iBox, there are many of them. Those five are, let's say, the top ones working in um, mainly in the Western uh, countries, in Europe, in US, those are really big. Um, in Spain, I actually didn't include it there. The biggest one, it's called iBox. And I just wanted to make it familiar because that is where I host my podcast, which channel I will and which QR code I will provide you later, just in case you are curious about how a podcast sounds like. And um, yeah, well, the bad news is that it's, it's in Spanish, but you can have a look just to, and I'm happy to help if anybody feels that, I don't know, you have the motivation to create a podcast. Okay, let's go on. Um, what is the profile of podcast users here in China? And this is quite relevant for us as an educator. Well, I love this sentence from Noelle that I found in her um, one of her articles in 2018. She said, podcasting stars in China are not singers, TV hosts, reality stars. They are teachers. They are business people and trainers who coach on very different topics history, literature, foreign languages, and more. We need to bear this in mind because one of the key things back in the States or in, the, um, in, other, in Western countries is that usually um, the, the, the big stars of the podcasting are usually TV stars or um, influencers or you know, comedians or this kind of things. In China, according to the latest report, the, um, like, for example, the one uh, that I got from PodFest China 2020, look, more than 80% of regular pod listeners are under 35 years old and have studied at least a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, which means that for us, the potential impact audience of the podcasting is huge, and our students are among those potential impact audience. Um, I'm pretty sure our students, of course, in different rates, but our students are part of this potential impact audience. They are familiar with podcasting. They know what podcasting is. And I'm pretty sure that many of them even have their own podcast. So us, as an educator, as an educa educator, um, I think we should not look away from this fact. We should somehow engage with this and be part of this trend. Look. On top of that, education purposes are still among their three top reasons to listen to podcasts. If we checked this um, graphic uh, from this podcast China in 2020, when, whenever they were asked about the main reasons for them to listen to podcasts and they could choose three reasons, the first one was to learn new things and explore more. But if we take a look to the third one, was to learn practical knowledge and skills. So what are we doing that we're not taking advantage of this um, trend, of this engagement, of this um, purposes, motivation, that they have to learn new things and engage with them by adding podcasts into our um, educational tools as one more? Well, <clears throat> I think this is quite a self-reflection point that we should take in account. And um, as I said, this is um, from a 2020, just a, a year ago. So it is quite, still quite popular, it's, it's quite recent. Um, okay, so what are the educational podcast typology? If we think of, okay, let's talk about educational podcasts, not general podcasts or, I don't know, um, 
podcast about a random topic or sports or whatever. Let's focus on education. All right. Um, I would like to refer to this sentence, 2008, by Shilton Kukusahom. The use of podcasts in education is part of the concept of MO. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with this concept, which is mobile assisted, assisted language learning. It gives learners the opportunity to learn anytime, anywhere, alone or with others, and it perfectly fits their always connected lifestyle. Look that this sentence was written in an article in 2008. Nowadays, 2021, we read it again. It perfectly fits their always connected lifestyle. I think it's even more trendy now. The always connected lifestyle, it's getting huge. If we look around, we see our students, what are they doing when they're not in class or even when they are in class? They're checking their phones all the time. They're always connected, checking their Taobao, checking their WeChat, checking their platforms, buying stuff, um, ordering in LMA or whatever, but they're always connected. So we should be part of this anyhow. And I think this is quite relevant because one of the things we always um, self-reflecting as educators is how can we promote, how can we make this engagement become bigger? Well, I don't think this is the, the best way, but it's definitely one of them. So Delgado in 2019 organized the education of podcasts according to the number of narrators into monologues, one person, interviews, two people, and choral, more than two people. But the really the good typology or the typology I look into deeper, it's by the type of narrator. It was um, raised by Stanley in 2005 and Thailandis in 2008. And they distinguish between the authentic podcast, which are entirely recorded in the target language in the L2, with no specific education purposes, but they might be used for education, right? So this is like, I don't know, you guys sit in front of the computer and speak about, I don't know, your memories when you were a kid or some anecdote that happened to you or some movie review or some books um, review or, anything. It doesn't necessarily have to have an education purpose, but it might be eventually used for education. We'll see how. They also find the students produced podcast, and they also find the teacher produced podcast. It's funny also that um, through the years, whenever we think of podcast as education, we mostly think of teacher focused um, one, the teacher produced one. We always think, oh yeah, we can upload some content and then share it with our students, or maybe we can do something online and then our students can download it. And then, but why don't we think all the way around? Why don't we think that our students can make a study, uh, 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 produced a podcast? Um, if we do produce a podcast as a teachers, as a tutors, we usually will do either two students or, and this is also a, another possibility, to all the teachers. I'm pretty sure you guys, I, I don't know, once, uh, even here at the XCTLU, I'm, I'm trying to think in, um, I'm trying to think in on, on the XCTLU and I think we also have a section or we have a, some um, sites on learning mode. I think somebody is actually commenting that on, on, the, on the chat, that there are some teacher to teacher podcasts. We can listen to them. I recall to listen to some of the sessions for the PG Cert uh, by Charlie Reese on as a podcast format, for example. It can be an idea, right? It can be an idea. And we don't need to be, <laughs> we don't need to be like necessarily paying attention to the video, right? Because it's a podcast, so you can just have it on your phone and then just go in on your bike or just doing any other thing while you're listening to it as a training, as a PD. I think it's quite an interesting concept. Um, okay, let me check the time. Okay. I think we're on time. Okay, let's focus. <laughs> My first approach is uh, related to, to student-produced podcast. Let's think about 
what can we do to um, for our students to produce their own podcast and why should we do so? Maybe some of you might think, I mean, really, we don't really have time for them to produce anything. They're, they are finding so many troubles when speaking. They're not willing to do so. Well, give me some good reasons. Okay, there are multiple benefits. I'm, I'm not going to read them all um, because there are too many things involved. But I might say that the benefits have been raised for years in multiple factors, in multiple terms. Um, one of them is the motivation. Well, you can check, it's not my words, it's quite relevant experts about um, who, who actually speak about that. For example, um, it increases intrin intrinsic motivation and student curiosity. Um, enhances student sense of ownership since they are active part of the creation process. Um, it reduces the anxiety and eventually speaking confidence is boosted. And this is quite relevant, I would say, for our Chinese um, students. Because we all know, especially we are teaching English or Spanish, we all know how difficult for them is to, to, to deal with the anxiety and the and the, the, the the fact that they have time to prepare a script, it will give you more time to, to reflect on the way they can pronounce better, they can gain confidence, so the motivation is actually boosted. The collaborative learning is also involved when, you, when we do let our students produce their own podcast. It fosters the collaborative learning as all the task-based um, activities, pretty much. They need to work together on a, on a common goal, right? Um, one of the ways I worked with podcasts in the past was developing a project. So um, it was one of the things they need to get it done by the end of semester. They need to um, produce a podcast with some, um, I made some groups of four people and they have to produce their own podcast. There was a training process before and it was quite successful, I would say. Um, in terms of the language production skills, some people might think, oh yeah, it improved the language production, but that's not natural because they have to prepare. So what? I mean, producing a podcast is a multi-stage process. It requires of several um, agreement. First, they need to agree on the topic. They need to agree on the way they're going to approach this topic. They need to agree on how they're going to express the ideas on that topic. Um, whether or not they're going to put some effects, some music in the background. There are a lot of factors involved that the student need to cooperate towards, right? So they can develop a self-awareness of other aspects that usually they would never consider in terms of uh, other language. For example, in terms of their pronunciation of some words, the intonation, the pitch, the pausing, the pace, the power changes of the voice whenever they're speaking. They need to think about all that because they know this will be will go live. This will be um, online and probably share with more people. So they will they will have this responsibility to do it right. And I'm pretty sure they'll try to pronounce it well and try to adapt their power changes of the voice. And so it's quite interesting. And of course, if we think of transferable skills, it's also quite useful in terms of enhancing the student's creativity or um, providing them with some digital skills. One of the things that they most said, it was that it enhances their digital skills to use several apps that they never used before. Okay, so specific ideas. Some ideas that I used in the past and it worked pretty well. For example, a podcast competition. Right, I'm gonna show you some samples. We have still like eight minutes, so I can show you some samples as well. What if we find, what if we propose? This is something like I did before: five minutes podcast in a group of two, three. In my case, I used four uh, four people groups on a chosen topic with multiple formats. Are possible interviews or a group discussion? In the case I used in the past, they had to present a topic that they might that they could choose. Of a, um, of a relevant aspect of the um, Hispanic society or culture. Um, they presented about um, some points, some, spot, some topic about sport 
or some music or some um, specific director that they like, anything like that. And they have to record, they have to think about, they have to record them. And all groups must listen to all podcasts and vote to decide their favorite three and explaining why. So this actually applies to many different activates, many different um, skills. They have to comprehend, they have to put the effort to understand what the others are saying and negotiate a meaning with other colleagues to make sure that they understand it well. Um, this was great, the pop drama. Well, in pairs, in groups, students play like a, let's say again, a role play of a short fiction or a scene from a novel, from a movie, from a show. Actually, this was quite, quite fun when we did and the students really enjoyed it a lot. And it was one of the best way I found to um, teach them how to pronounce several words and several difficult, um, you know, some issues that they were having with the pronunciation. Um, actually, let me, let me just share with you this sample from one of the one of the pages I mentioned before. In this case, is a student who is two students representing a scene from this movie, The Incredibles. Right? Hopefully, you can we can listen to it. Let me check. It's quite funny, actually. <laughs> I choose to hear here. I'm fine. I'm fine. It happens all the time here. Mom sits right up. Normally, she doesn't ever drink like this. Would you like some water, sir? Yes, yes, I would. This is my daughter, who you must know, right? Hello, Violet. Hello, Violet. Hey, Violet, say hi to. Don't push it, Dad. I'm Dash, her little brother. Hello. Hmm. This is really good water. It's very refreshing. <laughs> okay. So um, so here we have some some example of them. Of course, they, it's clear the. They, they can, they are reading, of course, but it's, we can apply this to many different levels, even from, from a beginner's level. It's a way they, they can engage and they can even um, engage with some cultural point as well. As well. Um, students, in this case, students must listen to it, at least two of them, and add comments into the comment section. When you add a podcast, there is a comment section that they can put their comments on. So it's quite useful as well to receive feedback. Listening club. Okay, this idea came from the original reading clubs, um, which was based on the fact that some people gathered together to read some passages from novels and then to promote an open discussion, right? Okay, so we can apply this in terms of podcasting. Why not our um, students by in groups pick a podcast in the target language, either an authentic or student produced from one directory, Simalaya, Chinting, anywhere, to listen to it together to activate a group a group discussion of teamwork. We can decide whether it's a group discussion. Maybe they have a higher level of competence, or we can um, even um, activate some activities with them to do it afterwards. For example, um, let's think about this one on Team Team. I wish we could listen to them all. But in this case, this is Team Team, right? It has an integrated player. It's so easy. We just have to click play. We live in an incredibly busy world. The, the pace of life is often frantic. Our minds are always busy and we're always doing something. So with that in mind, I'd like you just to take a moment to think when did you last take any time to do nothing? Just 10 minutes, undisturbed. And when I say nothing, I do mean nothing. So that's no emailing, texting, no internet, no TV, no chatting, no eating, no reading. Okay, so this is just an idea. For example, they might listen to this together and then discuss and put the ideas together. Hmm, it's a quite good point. When was the last time I did nothing? That I, ha that I did have a uh, relaxing time to do something something that I really like, or just like, just relax and do nothing. These kind of um, ideas are quite interesting. And some more, um, some more ideas that I have been using. For example, weekly interviews show where the student can interview either 
a member of their family, or they can um, fake that they are interviewing themselves. This is a, a self-interview. It's actually quite interesting, reflecting way to um, to explain some part of of the student's um, character. Um, they continue the story. It was really really fun when I used it. Uh, one of the, one group had to upload a podcast where they were telling the story. And then some days later, the next group had to listen to the podcast and then they had to record a podcast by continuing the story that the guys, that the other group firstly um, uploaded. So it also activated a lot of different competencies like listening and agreeing on the meeting and then producing something. And twister comp uh, tongue twister competitions, or one of my favorites, I might say, the poetry workshop. This is basically to, well, um, to read out loud some passages of either poems or um, literature. And I can tell that the students are really, really uh, creative when reading and they can, this can motivate them a lot to find new, um, new spots. Um, for, um, for culture and for um, culture engagement. Okay, let me check. Okay, well, the time is quite tight. I'll be, I'll try to rush a little bit. I'll, I wanted to go over more things. Well, the student feedback, since we, we're kind of in a rush, I got several type of feedback, but you know, some of the students, they say they don't like their own voice. I think we also, is the observer paradox, right? This also happens when you know that someone is recording or you're recording your own voice. Somehow you don't act the same and you don't like your own voice. You don't, this, this might happen, but overall I might say that um, students usually find it quite useful. Um, and I don't wanna finish without going over some ideas for the teacher produced podcast. Um, it provides students with authentic material because we do, we are native, so we can promote or produce this material. Tutors can complement the textbooks. We can use it as a extra material, allows the student to adjust the lesson as your own learning case. And if we do it for our um, professional development, we can exchange ideas with other tutors, with other, with other teachers. So some clear ideas that I've been using as a um, self-production, let's say podcast, are based on flipped classroom. So that I provide with, with materials first and then the students can um, um, get those materials beforehand, before the class, right? So um, let me check. Mm-hmm. So for example, the storytelling is a good idea. Um, telling fiction or true stories to listen first and then work later in class. Um, I have, actually when I, when I will share the PPT, you can click on these highlighted words so you can check the samples that I put on to link to the, the, the website. I'm, I'm afraid we don't really have much time and you're probably hungry already. So I don't wanna make it this quite long. Um, we can also explain some cultural component to introduce a topic, for example. Um, we can also use it to introduce a grammar point or to explain a grammar point that might not be clear enough. Um, and, but also we can think of, for example, as I said, some literature or poetry clubs, episodes where we can read famous passages of literature, poetry, um, News bulletins in the target language. That's also quite interesting. And I did that before. We can provide some, some news bulletin, like we are the BBC News or we are the, right? So we can provide it with some culture um, at the same time. Um, but what if we record some authentic episodes about different topics which student can subscribe to, usually for intermediate over that. I did that a lot. Actually, I had a, my own podcast. I will share the QR code later. Um, and some of my students did subscribe to it because they find it quite, user, quite useful. 
um, since they were <laughs> used to my um, tone of my pronouns and they can understand it kind of better. So, and, you know, in, in, that, in that podcast, I speak about history, I speak about some crime stories, uh, about some black stories, about multiple ideas. And we can also use the podcast as a, as a teacher for an extra support to answer commonly asked questions, to provide feedback, um, to provide advices or tip based on the student's performance. For example, after an assessment, we can upload the episode, um, the re review for this week, and then we can explain some of the main issues that we have found on the um, assessment or on the homework this week. There might be many options. As I say, you have clear examples of each one of them linked to the sites where I uh, link you with some real cases of students or, and teachers providing this type of, um, uh, of input of audio files. Okay, and just before we finish, uh, if you're interested, hopefully you are. <laughs> and if I encourage your motivation on using topics, uh, podcasts, sorry, you might find some upcoming projects that you might like. One of my favorites right now is Gist. Gist, speak your mind. Look, Gist is a social voice app based on micro podcasting where worldwide users can easily upload their voice notes of up to five minutes and get votes and comments from other users. It's free, it's simple, and extremely user-friendly. And if you just give me one minute, I will just go over it. Look, it's so simple. We don't have a register. We don't need to um, log in. We don't need to create an account, anything. You see, this is the website. Look, record an audio file, upload an audio file. If you want to upload it, just click here. Then you select the audio and boom, you got it. If you want to record, just click here. Process. Hola, 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 si, sí, aquí estoy, mira, un, dos, tres, pollito inglés. Let me check. Process. Hola, 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 si, sí, aquí estoy, mira, un, dos, tres, pollito inglés. There we go. So we have already recorded the gist title, the name, the email, and published. You can share it. This is great to use with the students because the maximum is, uh, is between one minute and five minutes. So our students can post here um, their opinions, their sharing, their anything quite fast, and they can get replies either on audio files or comments. So it's a very useful way to, um, to engage with them, right? And if we are interested in pod events, if we get some, if we want to get some more technical training or even professional training of how to use the podcast in education, um, uh, Podfest China, since last year, uh, two years ago, 2018, is the first podcasting event in China, bringing together podcasters, producers, students, fans. It's happening in Shanghai. I don't know now with the COVID situation, I'm not quite sure when that's going to happen. But the last one took place in 2019, um, as I said, in Shanghai, and it was huge. It was really huge. Um, and it really become uh, the top reference of podcasting events in China. So, and we have it pretty close. So hopefully um, you can access the website and get more information about when they're going to um, organize it. And hopefully you can join. And the last link I would like to share with you guys is the pod events. This is also the link you can check. It's the biggest database of workshop, lectures, webinars, and events about podcasts. For example, just, just a check. Today is 26, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Well, tomorrow, you already have some hot dogs podcast festival. If you see, virtual starts, blah, 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 and it's free. Well, the first one is paid, but the second one, a class, you see, Asian Voices, it's focused on podcast in Asia. So it's free event, it's virtual, and it's tomorrow. So there are a lot of events happening, right? Asian boys, you have the specific link on the PPT. Um, 
but we also have podcast audio lab getting the most out of your audio interface improving your interview techniques setting yourself up for success if you see all of them are free and virtual so you can just join through zoom or zoom or um there are many options just check out this website web pod events and you'll find out that there are multiple events going on these days right um and just the last thing the last thing as you said the last thing is saying thank you for coming and attending and i think it was a bit over timing you're probably hungry but if you have some if you have some time i would like you to i will invite you either to um, use the podcasting hopefully i'll convince you um and you have the QR code. This is my personal channel of the of my personal podcast in iBox. This is the my Instagram channel for the podcast, and this is my um, Spotify channel for my podcast, which is also available on Spotify. I must say that I feel very proud that my podcast is a sixty one in iBox in all Spain. So it's actually quite popular. I have more than 4,000 subscribers now. So yeah, I'm happy to it. And yeah, happy to everyone. Uh, thank you to everyone. If you need any further information or anything, I'm so happy to share with you and give you more information here or in the lunch or anytime. Okay, thank you. Thank you to everyone. Gracias, Cicie, Cicieni. Thank you.